I am Rebecca Pebble, and today with me I have a wonderful guest, an ISTP, Jan from Czechia. Hello, Jan. Hi, Rebecca. How are you doing? Good, good. So this was his idea to get us together and have a chat, and I think it's brilliant because a lot of people seem to want to know how an ISTP and an ENFJ interact. And while we're not going to focus exclusively on the Myers-Briggs or um, objective personality, I think um, we're going to actually talk more about feelings and music and language and cool stuff, which he came up with the topics. Um, but I think it'll still shine through our different personality types and functions and things like that. All right. OK. So guess, yeah. Yeah. So. Um... I come from Czechia, actually that's country in uh, Central Europe or East Europe, it's yeah, close. And uh, I've become interested in uh, typology and MBTI in general. And then I ran into like OPS with Dave and Shen. So some of you probably know, and I found it uh, very fascinating because I was, as an ISTP, I was looking for ways to understand people. And if there is like a system that you can learn to understand people that's for me was very appealing so i got typed uh, as well as, as rebecca and uh, from that time on uh, i'm not really a community member then in the sense that i create or talk about the stuff all the time but i really found it very interesting and useful in my daily life so we might talk about it later and uh, so uh, I was typed as ISTP, like double feminine, uh, T-I-S-E, consume, play, sleep. And what's interesting uh, that Rebecca, when I found her channel, uh, she told that she's also F-E-S-E, -E, savior, so the, also double feminine. So mm -hmm. I was thinking like what it would be like to interact with her. So now we're doing it and I'm very excited okay. to do that. <laughs> yeah, so fun. Uh, real quick, I hope I'm, I hope, can you see me? Is my screen shared side by side? Because I'm just in a no. little box. So I'm hoping it is side by side for you. No, actually, I can see your, uh, your whole full screen, but I can see that you're recording. So I guess everything is okay. Hopefully everything's okay. Sorry about that. It's just a technical. I just want to yeah. make sure I'm not in a little tiny box in the corner. But if I am, that's okay too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think it will go well. And yeah. well, well, it's interesting actually that none of us came up with the idea to test it before. So that's, that's <laughs> something. <laughs> that's our bad SI, I think. The details. Yeah, details, improvisation. Like uh, as I told, like I pro I actually put the wrong date <laughs> in my calendar, and <laughs> Rebecca called me message, uh, called me, sent me message, and uh, I was like a bit uh, surprised. But I'm as an ISTP, I'm ready to improvise. So yes, that's great. That's really great. Yeah, it makes me wonder if you were a J type, if you would have said, no, no, I'm gonna need more time. <laughs> Yeah, pr yeah, probably. That was scared there. <laughs> scared them. Yeah, it would have been terrifying. A day early. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So I love your questions. I wonder if we should jump in about the, the first one. Yeah. So that's about the music, right? Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. OK, OK. Yeah, actually, I've been playing accordion since I was, uh, I don't know, like 12, 12 years old. That ended when I went to university because and then uh, I got busy with assignments and uh, like uh, part time jobs and, and that. But I, uh, yeah, for me, it was more like, uh, although we played for other people, for me, it was uh, like I like listening to music and playing for myself. So that's probably the, I don't know, ISTP way or I, I don't know, but just music for me is very uh, like deep experience. Mm -hmm. And I don't like much like to perform for other people because I'm nervous and uh, self-conscious and it's like uh, not uh, the feeling I'm looking for when I'm, mm -hmm. what you? Because you perform a lot, right? Oh, well, and real quick, well, you reminded me. I want to tell everyone he has a really fantastic cover of the Game of Thrones <laughs> theme on accordion, which is really cool on his channel. So, 
Yeah. I guess I should link your channel in my box. I didn't think about that earlier when I was talking to you before we recorded. So I can yeah. do that. Like, yeah. You, you can, but a disclaimer, just one video, one music <laughs> video, because I was testing a new phone back then and I just, uh, you know, liked the Game of Thrones back then and uh, just so I played that. And also like two interviews about China because I lived there for years. So, uh, but that's it. Yeah. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't be surprised if you fi don't find anything. Maybe in the future I will do a few videos yeah. about this, anything, but... Uh, something but yeah. yeah. Uh, but to answer your question about performing, it's interesting because I feel the same way as you when it comes to instruments as mm -hmm. far as um, it's not so bad performing on YouTube because you can always re-record if you mess up but um, uh -huh. I actually had somebody contact me the other day about live music gigs and I was like I'm not ready, I'm not ready. <laughs> um, I would have needed three hours worth of material and I just I don't practice enough and um, I just, I don't know. I've put songs up on my YouTube channel before and I've taken them all down. I only have, I think, one up now because I just get self-conscious about it. Like you, I just want to be in the flow state. I just yeah. want to be kind of one with the instrument for a time. Um, and I, I don't think a lot of people know I've been learning the synthesizer and the theremin, but see, I haven't shown anyone because I feel like I, I want to master it before I unveil any of it. You know? Yeah, same here actually. So uh, you know, no, no type difference. <laughs> it's same no. for both. Yeah, I guess uh, it's for somebody. I guess when we back, go back to typology, it's like somebody who is a double decider, so more balanced. But if you are, if you get easily, uh, you know, fear of being judged. So that's yes. that's a huge barrier to performing. Yeah. But sometimes it's uh, another way is to say that, you know, by performing, you're also learning, practicing. So the, the one way is just practice at home, but that's a lot of time and effort. And only after you spend a few years, of you know, practicing, then you can perform. But uh, I, what helps me was like always to say, like to say, to put a disclaimer, <laughs> you know, it's like, hey, people, I can learn accordion a bit, but I'm not professional and uh, I just um, still, I, I will probably mess up. So please don't be, oh, no. don't be like, uh, you know, uh, what to say, like, I don't know, sorry, we might cut up this, uh, you know, surprise, don't be surprised as the word, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, and if I like told them, then I would feel much better and perform also better because they like, there was nothing I, I was hiding. Yeah, because I yeah. told them I'm not uh, that good as you might <laughs> think. So it's like expectation management. Right, exactly. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. You're lowering their expectations. Yeah. They just have to they jump over this little bar instead of this high volt jump. But that's funny you do that because I have this inclination to do the same thing. And um, I guess I had a video about my books that I've written and my writing partner said, I went to your website and I watched it and she's like, you've got to take that down. She said, because in the beginning you're apologizing. She's like, the whole time you're saying, oh, I don't know if this is any good or <laughs> I don't know. She's like, I know I shouldn't be marketing myself. She's like, no, no, no. <laughs> So I did, I took it down and I think maybe we, maybe that's something, I don't know, that we should do, have confidence in our abilities, even if we know it's not perfect and we know, we know, but I think it might not hurt yeah. to just go, go boldly and just do it and play the wrong notes. And <laughs> yeah, it's probably a good thing to, to say it in your head, like mentally, to yeah. apologize everybody in your head and then <laughs> go play. <laughs> Or if you're recording yeah. a video, say it and then cut it out. Cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> Probably yeah. the solution. I told uh, her, I said, I feel like I'm just being honest with people. I don't want them to think I'm, my confidence is higher than my ability or something like that. I want, I'm, I'm, I'm highly aware of that I'm not, you know, amazing. So I like to put, like you said, I like to put that disclaimer out there, but, but I'm starting to wonder if, 
I don't know, like it, it depends if you are professional, then probably not. If you do it for a living, then um, yeah. you, know, you, you don't download s sounds from uh, iTunes and uh, and hear a <laughs> disclaimer, but, right. <laughs> but for most people, like for those who are doing uh, music just for fun, I think mm. it's okay. And yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's so interesting and, uh, we both do that. For, yeah. for you, is music a way of connecting with others? It's mostly a personal experience, I'd say. Yeah. However, um, it kind of is a love language in a sense, because if I really love a song and I, I want to share it with somebody I really care about and then see if they connect with it on the same level that I do, um, my brother actually, we're kind of like music buddies where we're pretty... We'll do it like pretty frequently, actually, um, every other day or so. We'll send each other either, either albums or songs. And sometimes, you know, it's a, it's a miss. But usually we kind of we're on the same wavelength. And that's just such a cool feeling. It's, oh, yeah, you you get it, too. You know, you love it. So it, it can be. But a lot of times, and concerts, too. I think that's being the F-E-S-E. -E. Like, to me, that's what a concert is, is F-E-S-E. -E. And so, because you're feeling the energy of the room, and mm -hmm. it's just it's a whole experience, a sensory experience uh, that I love so much and I miss. Um, and so, where was it? Oh no, where was it going with that? I lost my train yeah, of yeah, yeah, the way of connecting with others. Connecting. Thank me, you, thank you. The yeah. same, I guess. Even though I'm much more like uh, self-conscious <laughs> in front of other people, because uh, you know my type seems uh, it's usually loners and mm -hmm. not very conflicted, pe conflicted people, like uh, not conflicting with other people, but mainly avoiding until you learn. That uh, that functioned with connecting with others. It's actually fun, and uh, then for me, it's also if it's just it ha if it happens itself. That's the most like beautiful because if I don't have it planned, but mm -hmm. it just happens and others other people are there, that's like the most beautiful because you are in the flow in the moment. But uh, when uh, it's prepared and everything for me it's like I, I don't like scripted things scripted too much so mm -hmm. yeah. yeah that's I, like, yeah i agree it's like the general idea sure it's like it needed to be scripted it's like in life in life in general you should probably know the direction where you're going but like to know like every part of the trip beforehand, that's kind of either boring and also exhausting and not realistic because you don't know what's coming. So it's good to know the direction, but, uh, and then go with flow. So that's, that's for me and for you as well. <laughs> yeah, I think you would make a really good improviser. Have you ever thought about trying improv? Yeah, actually, I I did, but I don't know, like if with music or maybe like theater. Uh, I I don't know actually because you know the thing with accordion is it's uh, it's kind of you know you can either play these East European like Russian like songs and da, 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 da. <laughs> or the second that was the the part like. Um, organ plays like Bach and these kind of things like serious things I enjoyed both of them but you you know it's more for the internal experience if you're in it's in church inside a building and uh, like four of us quartet and we were, we were playing Bach it was really deep uh, and, and also even if people are there you basically you don't need to perform in a sense like improv you know it's it's just yeah. but it's okay it's okay but it's not the, the thing i'm particularly keen on but the improv that's mainly like guitar because you can take guitar everywhere it's it's light accordion it's it's heavy you know, you know? Oh, <laughs> so yeah. you have to plan to take it with you but the guitar it's like you're playing just a chord and then uh, and singing uh, probably so it's very easy, whereas accordion you have to really know on the right side, it's like piano. It's, uh, I don't know how to say it in English, but you know, these um, white and black um, key, uh, keys probably, yeah, yeah. So you really need to have that to a point, otherwise you just... Uh, but you can still play accords on your left hand, that's, that's buttons. 
Um, that's like a guitar. If you're just singing or doing the melody, that's that's okay. But improv, yeah. Uh, you, you, then I'm I'm kind of lost. Yeah, the improv thing. <laughs> I was actually thinking about a theater or something like that. I'm not that uh, you know sure of myself of doing a stand-up comedy because that's kind of hard and. Uh, <laughs> You need to prepare a lot, actually, for that. And yeah, that's what I've heard. That's really hard. Yeah, and that sounds so intimidating to me. You're just one person. At least with improv, you have a group of people. They've got your back. So if you kind of fail, you're not failing alone. But uh, stand up. It's all you. And, and also the expectations, right? You're going for stand up comedy expecting to be entertained you know if you're mm -hmm. an audience in an audience you expect the the the, the com comedian to be funny and interesting and if he or she doesn't live up to the expectations you are actually kind of annoyed like why did i come here i came here to be entertained that's a lot of pressure yes so as an com as a comedian i would be like under a lot of pressure because knowing that everybody expects me to <laughs> deliver so that's a scary thing. So yeah. I'm, I'm not that courageous to, to do that. So <laughs> that's why I like the when it just flows, you know, and just talk yeah. with friends. We we talk about you know life, and sometimes we had like the best time of our lives, just joking around. But it, it wasn't planned, and that's the beauty. Yeah. It wasn't expected. So for me, that's the huge that's the huge part of life that I enjoy. It's like being surprised but not expecting but allowing it to arise mm -hmm. just from the moment yeah. and if it didn't if it doesn't then it's okay you have no yeah. expectations that's so like uh the dow i don't know if you've heard that this is yeah like, yeah just kind of just it is and it flows and it goes and you just go with it and that's really to me the essence of life right you can't control everything and you don't know how things are going even though our ni our introverted introverted intuition wants to think it can figure it out it's not always right so yeah exactly it's very zen that way <laughs> <laughs> yeah and it's it's a really easy way to go through life like that with having as uh, few expectations as possible it's same like in relationships we can uh, you know do uh, like we can coach a few people who watch <laughs> the channel because if you expect you know the other person to love you and show you everything they'll probably get annoyed like because they're not in the mood and everything but if you don't expect anything and you just uh, allow it to to come then it's the most beautiful experience that's at least what i've learned because i've done it of course like the wrong way so <laughs> that's how i learned <laughs> yeah right we're so wise from all these life lessons. <laughs> yeah, oh, man. That's probably the, the FN blast last time I discovered how to blast. <laughs> Be a teacher. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You remind me of love languages. I know we were talking about that a little bit before, I, uh, but I don't want to get us too off track. Maybe I should, should I save that. I guess I should save it because we still have music to talk about. Well, music, uh, yeah. I don't know where I was going with this, Jan. I was just, I don't know. You said something and I thought, oh, love languages. And because um, we were talking earlier about the functions in the love languages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I, you know, I, because love languages, it's like from the 80s or 90s. The book is around here. Pretty, the book is around pretty long time. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of typology in itself. You know, it's like, hey, people listen your partner is probably not the same like not same like you and like people are different like be careful and you know that's typology in itself and then we are talking about a bit uh, before the recording about like how it ties to uh, like objective personality or MBTI in general uh, because yeah it uh, for one side of uh, the coin like feelers as we are, it may come across a bit cold, you know, to uh, to receive like help from like the technical, practical help from somebody, but no no encouragement. But uh, I th I get I think for the other side, like our cheering and uh, encouraging uh, is also like 
perceived by them, but not helpful because they actually want you to do the thing. <laughs> right, the act of service. Yeah, yeah, the TE thing. Yeah, that's funny. So, yeah. I got us off track a little bit. I would encourage I don't know everybody why. I don't know why to my brain... learn as much as possible about love languages or MBTI because mm -hmm. even the fact that people are not the same will make a huge difference in your life. Your relationships will be better with your friends, co-workers, partners. It's just a huge game changer. Yeah. Yeah, it really is to understand people on a different level and to understand yourself on a deeper level. Why do I do the things that I do and how can I improve things about myself? Yeah, yeah. for sure. For sure. So you favorite music genres and music. Oh yeah, music. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's, I'm let's gonna, I guess I'm gonna go back to that. Uh-huh. So for yeah. you, what would uh -huh. you say favorite uh -huh. style? Because <laughs> I'm very I'm I do have certain styles that are uh not similar at all, but in a way they are. Let me explain. So sometimes I'm very sleepy and um, just slow. So I like to listen to metal music, really fast paced oh. drums and <laughs> you know. <laughs> to wake you up. It's, it's fun. Yeah. On the other hand, I also really enjoy like the deep like basses or or how to say like uh, melodic music, uh, if it makes sense. It just uh, if it touches your heart and you just you just feel it, you know. So it may be uh, like old music, like classic, but although it's not that much. Or even like even like medieval music. I have some uh, albums that are really rhythmic because it's like modern music actually you know medieval music is more like uh, today's i don't want to say pop but it's it has rhythm and you can like dance to it and it's just uh, easy to listen to like uh, maybe not the instruments because they are not that uh like familiar uh, you're not a bit yeah, yeah. with them but uh, it's simple you know it's like modern music whereas you know uh like uh, beethoven mozart it's beautiful but you actually have to study to appreciate that so mm -hmm. that's so that's beethoven mozart it's not that i listen to but uh, you know like vivaldi it's mm -hmm. just uh, violins and that's simple enough for me to to enjoy and you can see the accords, if I'm saying it correctly in English, I, I hope so. <laughs> you said the chorus? So the chorus? Yeah, chorus, yeah, yeah. Chorus, okay. Let me, let me, yeah. Yeah, chord, okay, okay. Actually, I've never said it in English before, so yeah, it's chord. Ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so when you, when you can like feel it deeply, even if, if it's without rhythm, then it's, uh, I like that. And best uh, to put it together, and you have like melodic metal or symphonic metal, and that's what I love the most. <laughs> oh, so that's your ultimate genre, would you say? Yeah, it's probably Nightwish. That's my most favorite okay. band. Yeah. <laughs> what about you? Who's the band? Uh, Nightwish. It's Finnish. Oh, Nightwish. Nightwish. It's yeah. It's written together. Okay, I'm gonna check them out. I've never heard of them. <clears throat> yeah, probably some of their all older albums. Yeah, I haven't listened to the recent one, but it's it's really good. I can send you links later. <laughs> oh yeah, okay, yeah, that would be good. <laughs> I love finding new bands and new music. Yeah. And what about instruments? I guess is the accordion one of your favorite instruments, or not quite? Uh, yeah, I, I, I like it, uh, but it's not popular instrument in a, like group setting because it's not that in guitar. It's far more uh, versatile. Yeah, that's true. That is very true. <laughs> I actually thought of uh, learning how to sing because yeah, yeah. you have all <clears throat> always your voice. With yeah, yourself. And you it's, carry like, it with you. it's like wow. If you think about it. You can just come and sing everywhere. Anywhere. Yes. Yeah. I love singing. 
So that's uh, once pandemic is over, I hope uh, to join a group uh, and maybe choir. I don't know. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to be part of group. Save same uh, minded people. This would be great. And just yeah, would be fun. Yeah. Sure. Ah. What about you? You, you? you do listen with other people. Uh, sorry, sing, sing together with other people in choir or just. Uh, I grew up um, singing in choir, church choir, school choir, and then uh -huh. uh, all through elementary, middle, and then high school I did show choir. And then in college I was in the chorus, and I was so I've always done that. And then in church, you know, I'm singing at church, but not I'm not performing with the praise and worship band currently or anything. Okay. And that's new. I love. There's something about harmonizing with people, especially that I love. <clears throat> it's just magical. I don't know what that is. But once you do it, you kind of get addicted to it. <laughs> yeah. So I'm kind of sad that I'm away from it, honestly. But currently, yeah, actually, I like <clears throat> the, to sing the the medieval songs because uh, for me it's like energizing. Or even if it's because in medieval it's either really rhythmic or or religious as well, because in that time it was really thought thought through and it's just beautiful. Yeah, does that include Gregorian chants or are those prior to medieval? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it even is Gregorian, Gregorian chants and uh, and later. Uh, it, okay. It's funny because now now we are talking. My my, my voice is getting a bit, <laughs> a bit a bit sore. But uh, I'm I'm not oh, actually no. used to talking uh, that uh, that much. Oh uh, no! So I need actually, to take actually. Over. I am at at work. Yeah, I do because. Uh, I am uh, uh, work in supply chain, so it's a lot of organizing and everything. And uh, I, at work, I speak uh, Czech, English, and, and Chinese. So it's like. Wow. <laughs> That's so impressive. Right. That's really cool. When I come home, I'm really tired. So I'm glad we are doing it on, on weekend. Otherwise, I'd be uh, really boring because I'd be like <laughs> half asleep. <laughs> have to turn on that metal music and get you going. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, I can take over if you want and talk a little bit. If you want me to, if your voice is getting a little tired. No, 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 no problem. I, I have my tea here. So it's, it's, I'm so it's glad. From, yeah. From, from China. So uh, I like that aspect of the culture, of course. Uh, you know, we can do a whole another even series of videos about like living in foreign country and uh, yeah, uh, or languages, and if you want to, uh, <laughs> that would be if you're cool. interested, leave a comment down down there, and I can talk a bit. <laughs> we'll do like so this, today's is the music kind of intro to yeah, 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 Jan, yeah. and then music, and yeah, and then we can go to. Mm. I forgot. I had a bunch of questions, and that was more about people. I think. And yeah, so foreign countries, China. Yeah, we could have a whole year long series. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I do. I like that idea. It could be fun. I like that the, the, for singing. It's also good for your health, actually, because it uh, it's vibrations. It's fascinating, and if you vibrate, it's like uh, the chants, Tibetan chants. Mm -hmm. If you uh, do, you you can really feel it, and it, you you literally vibrate. Your body vibrates, and it's very relaxing for the body. Yeah. So uh, I think singing is such an amazing. Uh, thing tool to all well, tools to 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 mechanic to mechanical but uh yeah uh, it's uh, really good for your health uh, you it makes you feel good and if you sing uh, good <laughs> it, <laughs> it can make other people feel good but, you know if you don't sing right, the hell that <laughs> there is a catch yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like a cat purring because actually last night one of my cats was snuggled up against me and I could feel him purring and I thought oh this is so soothing and they yeah. say it it is um there are health benefits to that it's like ASMR right the, the, the videos that you listen to somebody whispering yeah I think that with the cats that would be even better wow yeah the purring maybe so maybe so because yeah it's soothing it really is <clears throat> Yeah, I was thinking maybe about getting a cat, but I'm I was afraid that because I usually work long hours or not 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 that long, but um, then I go to the town to see my friends. If when it's not pandemic, of course. But uh, so I would kind of feel guilty if if the cat is all the time at home and uh, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta give it some attention. I know some people. 
they think cats you can just sort of leave them in and to an extent you can but they really need they need a lot of love too yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so the same same here because uh, i also feel feel it if they are alone then i would feel Aww. bad actually <laughs> I guess cats are kind of like introverts in that way where you think, oh, I can just leave my introvert alone. But you guys need affection and time too. You don't want to be alone forever. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe cats do better alone than dogs because dogs really want to play with you all the time. Yeah. I guess and cats are just sometimes aloof and just... Yeah, you know. let me do my own thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then you say, okay. I don't care about you, and I start working on a laptop, and I just come over right there, right, yep. the keyboard. <laughs> oh, yes, that is the story of my life. If I'm engaged in something, then they're all up in it. Like, nah, this is not more important than me. <laughs> yeah, uh. I had a kid, but uh, I had a video call with my like PhD supervisor, and uh, she has a cat, and <laughs> the cat was a regular part of our consultations. Oh, yeah, because <laughs> yeah, it's... it's attention on their terms yeah it's yeah. funny how they how they work so. okay. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. should i say my favorite music stuff genres yeah, yeah. stuff although I, I feel like people that watch my channel already know it's there's really no surprises here although i don't know i'm gonna go a little deeper than yeah, maybe, so, maybe if there is a difference between what uh, you perform and what you listen to, maybe. Oh, Just... yeah. Oh, definitely. Because I don't have the instruments I need to to create the sound that I listen to. I would need um, <laughs> a lot more synthesizers. I'd need a whole, <laughs> a whole band. <laughs> so I hear songs in my head and then I try on my acoustic guitar. It's like, oh, this is not, this is not the same. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, of course, I love my 80s new wave synth pop. That's like my ultimate, I don't know what it is. I know it's super cheesy and super flamboyant and weird, but I love it. That's probably why I love it. Mm. Um, but I also love Motown and I love um, Baroque pop from the 60s, which um, uses a harpsichord. I love that sound. I don't know. It's really cool to me. Very hippy dippy. There's my NF coming out. Uh -huh. And I love rock, like most genres of rock, except for screamo music, pretty much. I mean, I don't know if someone's screaming, and maybe that's my empathy. Like my, I feel like my throat hurts <laughs> for them. <laughs> um, and lately, I've been listening to a lot of gospel music, which I love. I don't know, like that just gets me gets me going. So, yeah, I'm kind of all over the place, actually. I guess I, I love I listen to everything, but I love. Those are the ones I really, really love. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, sometimes it's a uh, do for you. It's like first the feeling, and then you go listen to the music that has the same vibe, or or probably you let you hear, hear something, and then you get to the mood. Uh, probably it's the both ways. I, I guess for me it's both ways. Yeah, it depends on the song. Cause sometimes. Yeah. The melody will catch me or just something about it or the rhythm or sometimes it's the lyrics it just depends yeah some songs mm -hmm. I'll, I'll i totally focus on the music and i don't really care about the lyrics as much and some songs i just uh, i'm obsessed with the lyrics and so the melody doesn't matter as much and sometimes you get the perfect marriage of both it's like oh this song is so epic <laughs> or if it's instrumental then you don't have lyrics at all obviously yeah. so yeah yeah. And, and different genres for different things like classical I do love classical but that's more so if I'm writing or mm -hmm. I don't know something where I'm focused on the other activity more so than just focus on the music yeah. yeah well recently I actually heard punk music but cover by a swing orchestra it's real and it's really epic because <laughs> nice, you know, nice. really the old instruments like really uh the breath instruments like or brass? what it's called yeah um, it sounds like clarinet and tuba oh. but it's in the really the, the punk rhythm I oh, to, to, okay, and okay. Yeah, yeah, I, I like danced <laughs> I, I i had it on repeat like 10 times and i was Usually, what I do is, it's like I wash my dishes, and it's like I'm when I'm 
<laughs> like playing the guitar, you know, but I'm scrubbing the plate. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. <laughs> that, I love that's it how I'm it having you fun. Feel good. Sorry. Yeah, and it feels so energetic. So yeah. no matter what it is, if it's like metal, rock, uh, or swing, jazz, if it's if it has the energy, it's like yeah. Then no matter what what style. So I also don't like to say that I listen to different styles, but if the song has a the energy, the feeling, then, then it's then it's it. And then you know, with like punk music, and the other day maybe I'm sad and I need to like to process some emotions. Then I like put the Gr Gregorian chant on, and it's really like meditative and and deep, and uh, it's kind of really sad, but it's it feels right because sadness is also beautiful in the way that it's really deep, you know, and trying to, like to to. Uh, like heal sadness and like it feels more like suppressing it. If you like put a, a happy music and you try to be happy, but it's not genuine. No. Uh, that's that's not it. It's not healthy anyway. No. The different think, mood. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, the different that's mood allow you to have a bit of everything to listen to like everything. It's it's beautiful. Exactly. So, exactly. Right, so, yeah. That's true. They say you've got to feel it to heal it. I believe that. So just mm -hmm. process, I guess that's the FI, introverted feeling emotions. You just got to feel, even if they feel icky, um, you're right. Because sometimes I just have to listen to my emo music or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So depressing. <laughs> people would be like, what? Like I, I, when I get so angry, sometimes I crank up Nine Inch Nails and people would probably be so surprised because those are such dark lyrics but that's like a part of me that i'm not gonna suppress yeah, it like, I'm not gonna... Uh, why not if you need it and that's completely understandable like when i was in high school i was also because cut up cut up how to say cut out kind of way uh, not connected with my emotions anyways mm -hmm. and i feel also like this need but i didn't know what it was so i uh, like I listened to Cradle of Filth, you know, <laughs> you know <laughs> the English band. That's really dark mu music and yeah, like yeah. probably like nine, nine, uh, nine. What was what was the name again? Nine oh, nine 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 yeah. yeah, it's probably like suicidal. Uh, yes. like that. Yeah, yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was also my gothic, like goth or uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, part of life and. Uh, but I guess you need that sometimes, and then you process it, and you move on to some happy stuff, and that's that's beautiful because you have the range of everything when you yeah. need that. So uh, right. no need to like toxic positivity. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And do you find? Because I know for me, I tend to have music playing almost constantly. If I'm not watching a YouTube video or listening uh -huh. to a YouTube video where I'm learning something in the background, uh -huh, uh -huh. like when I'm cooking, for example, I love to have music playing or um, just in the shower, I have a little speaker that I have music playing or getting ready, I have my music playing. And, and I've heard some people say, no, I don't listen to music. And when I'm driving, obviously, uh -huh. but I'm thinking, wait, so some people don't listen to music constantly. I thought this was normal. Yeah. Wow. I do listen to music uh, every day, not constantly, because uh, at one point in my life, I just switched to podcasts, like to, mm -hmm. to learn something, because, you know, I'm a language aficionado, so I switched to learning languages. And, but you can't do that all the time, because just information overload, and you just are, sometimes you're too tired. And then, yeah, I listen to music, then, uh, then it's perfectly okay. But just not to not listen to anything anytime. Like sometimes it's okay. We just need to concentrate and think deeply, or just. Uh, but I wouldn't do that like all the time. That's probably why li people in history they sang, because there was no music around, so they sang all the time. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. Because I yeah, we can talk about this uh, <laughs> because at least in like European history, but I, I don't know if you know from your grand grandmother, because people mm. when they work together, they sang, you know, on, on in fields or on fields and or yeah. when they were doing something. Uh, it's, it's just it makes sense 
Yeah. Don't tell me about it now because it's it's boring just to be silent, yeah. right? No. And also, uh, it's a way of relating with others and also maybe keep the pace. If you're doing something boring, then you're singing to the yeah, rhythm. Yeah, kind of marking time a little bit. You. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. That's so true. I could see that where if, if we didn't have music, I'd probably be singing all the time. Yeah, and it was natural. But a lot of like today's society, it's sometimes it's it's more like be quiet and do the thing and uh, don't ask questions and just be you know be good good kid, good child, and so much is suppressed. But Actually, singing is the, the healthiest way to get out the emotions. If you're sad, you just sing it out. So the poems were written like this, right? It's like actually writing poems is kind of a therapy. <laughs> oh, you can't, yes. Good poems are like real. It's, it cannot be, you know, like fabricated or just thought. You have to, It has to be felt. Even though I'm not big uh, poem, like a uh, fan of poems, I don't understand them much, but I can, uh, I, I get the same uh, idea with, with music. So uh, if you listen to, probably you heard of uh, Dvorak, Dvorak. Uh, it's like the New World Symphony. No, and, uh, actually. Uh, he was a Czech who came to America and he actually, he was invited to set up the American music because there was nobody like, um, there was no American music, so they invited him. So that uh, so rich people of America, you know, he was performing in uh, Carnegie Hall, I guess. Mm -hmm. So he can, yeah, he's probably the most famous Czech composer, Antonin oh. Dvorak. If I say it in English, in Czech it's Antonin Dvorak. And he went to America also, he studied the Native Americans and their way of uh, living and uh, it made some impressions on him and uh, also he put that into the music, although the music is orchestral. And yeah, it's one of my favorites, totally check that out. It's, it's, oh, uh, can you link that for us too or send it to me or whichever? Yeah, yeah sure. I think it's uh, okay. this is really, uh, really well known, so um, I guess that will be a good quality audio on, uh, on YouTube, maybe even, even video because... Uh, yeah. That's really moving. Yeah, that's kind of orchestra I like because it's mm -hmm. it makes you feel something. It's not like uh, like I don't I don't get the feeling with Mozart probably because that's like yeah. it's instrumental but no feelings. But this is uh, really deep, uh, so I like that. Yeah, I, I think I, I'm curious what you'll say to that. It's probably like okay. the F E functions, you know, like. <laughs> It's expecting, uh, uh, like, if you like it, it will make me happy as well. It's like, <laughs> I'm curious about your feelings. And, <laughs> and yeah, so. oh, that's awesome. You're <laughs> that you're utilizing that fourth slot FE. Is it fourth uh, slot for you? Yeah. Right? Fourth, Sorry? okay. Is, it the, is your FE in the fourth slot, right? Yeah, that's the bottom. Okay. It's, uh, that's it was right. long, okay. unconscious, and... Uh, Neglected, but <laughs> not anymore. Though you said not anymore. Yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. for my yeah. other ISTP friends, I am the the therapist because I, I teach them how to do feelings and emotions because I went through that and I can put it in technical language. Like I can like write them a manual to read or you know, mm -hmm. tell them like instructions and. Uh, like I'm also uh, not that bad with analogies because that's not my last function. So I usually tell that like uh, operating a computer system. So how would you do that? And then I, you know, explain it as as it was a computer because that's safe language for them. Or uh, it's probably yeah, that what fascinates me. If you if you know the person, what he or she likes, you can. Uh, speak to them through the analogies of their life because there are only so much patterns in life for everything and you can say one thing in a thousand different manners so that's that's uh, what i like it's kind of fun you know uh, yeah. you can talk about the anime uh, with, with fishermen about fish but it's the mm -hmm. principle you know you mentioned the the church community gospel like 
Jesus spoke in uh, the Metaphors. parables, like he was, yeah. Yeah, like he was explaining things through the language of um, people who, who, you know, was talking to, like every good teacher, probably, you know. Yeah. And if I'm talking to somebody who knows a lot about uh, cooking, I can, I can uh, like liken life to cooking probably uh, no problem <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah we were both talking before about how we love cooking so that's awesome yeah cooking is so much fun i guess maybe that's the sc part of us i guess oh uh, yeah yeah and um, i sc so maybe a little bit huh yeah do you cook every day because uh, oh you're at yeah, home I mean, there is a chance Pretty so, much, unless I have leftovers, but yeah. Well, but even breakfast, I guess, I, if you consider that, yeah. So every day, pretty much, yeah. Yeah, same same here, yeah. Because yeah. uh, if you're at home office, then uh, you can do big creations. You can bake, cook, <laughs> fry, and no. just uh, having a call and uh, just doing the stuff, chopped carrots and like that. Yeah. <laughs> It's so funny because you asked a question um, in this list of questions that you uh, sent me about my favorite machine or tool, not to skip ahead, but honestly, my thought was, well, anything in the kitchen. Yep. <laughs> yeah, because it's just so fun to cook. And I didn't know until I really got into cooking how much I really enjoy it, the uh, whole process. Just something about getting everything out and chopping and sauteing and like I said, having the music playing and dancing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a whole SE experience. Yeah. Because you're in the moment and also um, you're not thinking too much about it. So it allows you like clear your head. Mm. And uh, uh, for me, like doing this or walking is best uh, meditation ever because my body is employed so I don't have to worry about that and then my mind is calm whereas if I'm sitting I get all antsy fidgety and I can't concentrate at all so I, my body has to do anything and then yes. I my mind is calm so yeah calm to yeah <laughs> that's funny that's that's interesting even though our types are sub supposed to be kind of well, at least the four letters are mm. opposites but the functions are the same but just flipped around a little bit yeah i think I it's, it's that it. yeah the functions are the same and even what, masculine what, feminine yeah, yeah yeah sorry sorry <laughs> no that's okay i'm wondering what is that for both of us that needs our bodies to be preoccupied so that our minds can sort of just who decompress a little bit and not be going a million miles an hour yeah, Is yeah. that the TI that we're trying to quiet all of us? I think that's yeah. play over sleep. Oh, okay. Because play always likes to do something and uh, dibble in something, I, I guess. That's okay. the, the monkey mind. And, uh, oh, oh, play is the monkey mind. I guess that is, oh, no wonder everyone's always like, you overthink things, Rebecca. <laughs> Maybe it's because I'm lead play. Yeah, I would say so. For lead play people, it's hard to calm down, even though I'm, I have, I do have sleep, but still, yeah. I, I, I guess for you it would be even more harder because you're even double activated, savior play. Yeah. So this thing never shuts off. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's interesting. And for those that don't know, we're talking about the um, objective personality animals. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for some context. Yeah, that's ah. a huge because a standard MBTI doesn't account for these uh, so-called animals. It's basically how these oh. two function, pairs, interact with each other. It's, it's actually really important. So, yeah, because even though you are like uh, technically uh, e N F J, right? Mm -hmm. But you are basic, but you are F E S E, yeah, S F, yeah. actually. But you know, so it's kind of like an E S F J, but not really. Yeah. yeah. That that's yeah that's that's hard to tell because you have E N F J functions, but 
right. your how to say character or not no no not, not character has the temperament will be S F I guess. Yeah. Which is so interesting because the way. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. I was just really saying it's interesting. That's no. <laughs> <laughs> um, the way Dave and Shan and objective personality present SF is they call it the popularity function. But anyone that knows me, I have never been popular. So I'm like, I wish I was SF. Uh, <laughs> I've always been kind of like, not, I don't want to say an outsider, an outcast, because people, I get along with people, I guess a social butterfly, but that never was at the top of the social ladder ever. I don't want to lead people. I, I just, I know yeah. some people think ENFJs are leaders, and I don't, I, that doesn't interest me at all. I've never wanted to be a leader, so I don't know what that is. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, popularity, it's, for the eyes, see that it, it, it's not that the person is popular, but you pay attention to the, well, basically FE, if people like it or not, and the S, if people like or not the, the physical thing or what happens in reality. So actually, like, yeah, I, I, I think it's accurate on you because, you know, unlike, because if you if you'd be N over S, probably you wouldn't uh, care too much about your appearance. I would say, I would guess, because some people who are intuitive, like feeling about the vibe, meditating, well, the sensory is just you know it's way it's this distraction. But for you, you probably enjoy like doing makeup, right, and probably yeah. hairstyles, and what you put on is yeah. it's. Uh, also way to say your mood right in the moment yeah. and that's very that's all it is it's sensory that's true i didn't think about oh no <laughs> here i am sitting there thinking i'm such an intuitive person i'm in my head and then i'm like doing taking this time to do my makeup what should i wear taking time to pick out my outfit because i don't i feel like the way you present yourself is so important I don't know. There's something about that yeah, to me. Yeah, and I mean, of course, there are times where I'll go, I'll go out and I don't look my best. So I'm not always focused on that, but I'm highly aware of it. I'm, I'm aware I'm not presenting my best self that day. Yeah, but you're not blind to it. Like if you would be totally like N on the top and S at the bottom, like you'd be completely, you would even register it on on your level like you wouldn't uh -huh. even think about it or feel feel it you know i, I guess and but it's a, yeah. if it's in the middle then it's like okay you can balance yeah balance which yeah, is a good thing because yeah. yeah. i don't ever want to be that person that's all about their uh, obsessed with their appearance because i think that's taking it too far um so you're right yeah. i think it's got to be a nice healthy balance yeah, balance is important, actually. Like, if somebody says that the appearance is not important and the money is not important and everything, then that's, uh, you will run into serious problems later in life or maybe earlier in life. But also the yeah. same thing if you think that spirituality is completely like something fabricated or it's just mm -hmm. non-existent and just um, the, the vibe, you know, uh, then also this, the same problem, but in reverse. So a little bit of everything and uh, you've got a happy life. <laughs> we, solve for you guys. we solve life for you. Oh, you just got a, the middle path. You just have to, moderation is key, I guess. That's, that's uh, a good yeah. takeaway for everybody. And to uh, remind ourselves, so let's remind uh, myself for sure. That's the, the, so gold, all gold, that's the Goldilocks, right? The Goldilocks story, that's the middle. Uh, oh yeah, not too hot, not too yeah. cold. The poor <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's true, that's true. That's so interesting. You're giving me all these revelations. And even before <laughs> we started recording, he was telling me things and just, I had epiphany after epiphany. I thought, I don't know if it's because of our types almost being different in a certain way that you shine lights in places I didn't see them. I didn't see things that way before. So I appreciate that. Absolutely, because although I am like sleep, Technically, my like demon functions, Dave and Shake, Chow, um, Dave and Shan called it. <laughs> it's 
basically, but it's double masculine and still, it's still there. So probably I'm thinking about all these things and I'm just condensing into one pattern and so so I can see that right and as I told I can and put a different name tags on it like Goldilocks right because mm -hmm. that's in English speaking world that's that's probably very known this this story but uh, if I was speaking with Chinese I probably said say something I don't know from Confucius or <laughs> I don't know. Yes. Yeah, because they have also, in every, every culture is uh, saying about like golden uh, middle path, mm -hmm. or middle golden path, like something like that. Yeah, probably. And sure. uh, it's just, uh, yes, it's the, even though you're technically your NI is higher than mine, right? <laughs> <laughs> but, technically. Maybe, but maybe you also need like to process that analytically, mm -hmm. which is the TI. And yeah, like that's lab, like so. putting the blocks together. It's like programming, like if this, then that, and if not this, then something else. And then you can peel off the logic like on like an onion and you just, uh, it's basically like programming. It's very logical because thinking is in, in MBTI world, for me, it's like very logic, you know. So that's that's come natural for me. <laughs> yeah, are you a programmer? Uh, no, but I relate very much to this way of living or thinking because I am programmer in a sense. I see world as a sequence of mm -hmm. if then. <laughs> yeah, the cause so, and effect. Cause and effect, exactly. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, my brother, who I believe is an ISTP, he's uh -huh. a programmer, so yeah. that, that I guess that fits the type. Mm. That's, that's the TI as opposed to like TE, which is probably like find a way that works for everybody and mm -hmm. not necessarily looking at the logic, the structure of it. And they say that TI is looking for truth, whereas TE is looking for way to efficiency, make it done, make it uh, work for everybody so I I agree with that yeah although of course I also look for ways to be efficient it's like yeah learning yeah. by listening to podcasts while doing my dishes and <laughs> like <laughs> right. walking yeah being in the gym and also listening so that's that's good or um yeah like that so it's, right. it's usually like making a, my mom always said like connect the useful and pleasant. I, maybe there is saying for that in English. I'm not sure, but you know, if you must do something that's like a necessity, also like find a way to make it uh, pleasant to be like, mm -hmm. so that you enjoy that because oh, you can't avoid that. I like so, that. Uh, I like that. <laughs> and it's interesting you mentioned efficiency being important because I find the older I get, the more I appreciate efficiency. I guess because time is running out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't say dark, that. <laughs> but yeah, I just feel like I, whereas before I didn't really mind, but now it's like, don't waste my time. You know, I got <laughs> a little more TE. I guess it's beefed up just a little bit, not a lot, but so. Yeah, yeah cause we have all the functions, so. Yeah. yeah. Something you know. You said you're like you feel like old so, but for me it's like very young in spirit. <laughs> yeah, I know. I feel like I'm a paradox in a lot of ways because I do. I have a young spirit, but there's. Yeah. I feel like there's not to sound. I don't know cocky, but I feel like I have a lot of wisdom or something. So it's this juxtaposition of the inner child with the old sage kind of living within me cohabitating that's, that's taking funny. turns and right now it's like the the inner child's coming out <laughs> so yeah but it's fun if you imagine like uh, you know old old grandpa and the and the <laughs> young grandson it's it's beautiful image <laughs> yeah, yeah thank you thank you yeah. that would make a nice painting or something or a poem exactly that's what i was thinking about the painting yeah yeah that would be nice uh, Oh, we're almost at an hour, so we could we have two options. Uh, we could either 
wrap it up here or and do a part two, which would be fun, or we can try to get through the rest of the questions today. I think we can wrap it up here today and uh, release it and see what uh, reactions are. Because ah. uh, for me, it was uh, really fun and I enjoy it very, very much. So if there is, uh, you know, if people are saying they enjoy it as well, then we can do part two about, uh, yeah, we have a lot of topics. We about. have a lot of questions. <laughs> <laughs> so and that page is this is true. Oh, the languages. We didn't get into that, but we could always save oh, that and do a whole thing about I, languages. I could talk about it like for hours. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, well, this has been lovely. Thank you so much, Jan. Thank you for um, giving me this idea, reaching out to me. I appreciate that. And um, I look forward to the next time. I hope our audience loves it as much as I did or we did. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, thanks that you, you know, reacted so positively or you know, because I was, to be honest, I was kind of uh, afraid also because I've never done that before. I was, as I was saying, uh, mainly avoiding people living on my own. But now when I've learned to, to like, I'm, I'm still learning to relate to people. So I really appreciate that uh, you're so kind. <laughs> oh, you're <laughs> welcome. Yeah. yeah, my pleasure. So. All right, till the next time. Okay, see All you right. later.